hidupku Roho yang ku Nariku impie Cisi wewe My soul, my Savior, down to Thee. How great Thou art! How great Thou art! This is my soul, my Savior, down to Thee. How great Thou art! How Good morning. Welcome to Drive-In Worship on the second Sunday of Easter. Just a quick reminder for those of you who may not have been here before, it may be wise to start your engine once or twice during the service so you don't end up with a dead battery. We begin on page two with the thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image, and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert, you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water of baptism, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you, O God, be honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.
our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, may we who have not seen have faith in you and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from 1 Peter chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have to suffer various trials so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them, and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, reach out your hand, and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Now, again, the children are going to remain in their cars, but if anyone can hear me, maybe your parents will let you honk the horn so I know you're listening. Oh, I hear some. I think there's some big kids honking their horn. Well, kids, I want to talk to you a little bit today about believing and seeing. At our house, we've been enjoying the spring weather and have been planting some seeds in the ground. And one of the things that we want to plant, which grows great around here in the summer, is watermelons. And watermelons are so much fun because you plant a tiny little seed and then they grow and grow and they can become 
huge fruit that are not only really neat to look at, but they're really delicious to eat. Well, I don't know how much the watermelons that might grow in our yard will weigh, but would you believe me if I told you that one time somebody in Tennessee grew a watermelon that was so big it weighed 350 pounds. Now some of you might weigh 50 pounds. This watermelon weighed 350 pounds. The person who grew it couldn't even pick it. They had to haul it up onto a wheelbarrow and put it in the back of the truck and take it to the fair to get weighed. It was so big. Now if you're like me and you hear about a 350 pound watermelon, the first thing I think is, I want to see that. I want to see that. I want to see not only how big it is, but I want to see the number on the scale to see if I really believe that that watermelon weighed 350 pounds. Well, today in the Gospel of John, we hear a story where people are telling Thomas, one of Jesus' disciples, he has been raised. We have seen him on Easter day. The tomb was open and Jesus came out and he's alive again. He is not dead anymore. It's amazing. It's a miracle. The Lord is alive. And Thomas says, I want to see it with my own eyes. I want to reach out and touch Jesus with my own hands because I know him and I saw him die on the cross for our sins and I want to see him to believe that he is really raised again on the third day. And so Jesus appears again a week later and Thomas does get to see with his own eyes that indeed Jesus, his friend, had been raised from the dead on Easter day to forgive us and bring us eternal life. And Jesus shows him where he, the nails of the cross marked his hands and feet and where the mark was in his side. He wasn't afraid to show Thomas that he had been raised from the dead, but he also said one more thing. He said, blessed are those who have not seen and have still believed. And sometimes it's hard to believe when we don't see but Jesus says, blessed are those, happy are those who believe in me, even if they don't see me. And I think that's something that we as kids, and as big kids too, sometimes have trouble with, is that we are invited to believe in Jesus, even though we don't see him. But guess what? Just like with Thomas, Jesus was indeed raised on the third day, even though Thomas didn't see it. And we didn't see it. But even though we didn't see with our eyes, we believe that it happened, it was true, and it is for the salvation and forgiveness of all. It was a wonderful miracle. And so faith is the word that we use just to describe believing, even when we can't see. But we can hear the testimony, we can read in scripture, we can know God in our hearts, we can hear others tell us of the miracle stories that have happened in their lives. And those help us build up our faith even when we can't see it. Let's have a prayer together, kids. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus, who was raised again on Easter Day. Help us to celebrate the miracle of the resurrection that Jesus was raised, even though we don't see it with our eyes. Help us to have faith and believe in you. Amen. Nine minutes. No, that's not how long this sermon is going to be, although it might be. We'll see. We'll time it. Nine minutes was how long it used to take me to drive my very first car from my house on West Ashley to my best friend's house on John's Island. Now back then, the definition of traffic on John's Island was getting stuck behind a tractor. So it's a little different from today, but still then nine minutes was probably a little too short a time for any person to drive safely from my house to where hers was located. But if you've ever been a teenager, you understand the urgency at times to make it to your best 
friend's house. Now, she lives an hour away. She and her husband found this perfect little plot of land down on Wadmala Island, and we moved about as far north as possible to still be in Mount Pleasant. So needless to say, between life and work and family and the distance between us, we don't see each other as often as we used to. We're doing, we were doing a really great job of scheduling dinner dates after work every once in a while, but now with social distancing, that's over. The other day, she called me just as I was leaving the house to venture out to the grocery store, and she said she was in my neck of the woods just leaving a medical appointment. So we decided it wouldn't be breaking the rules if we both just happened to pull into the same parking lot and stay a little bit distance away from one another just to say hello. So we parked a few spots away and we leaned on the hoods of our cars and shouted at each other for a few minutes just to catch up. And you know, for a little while, it didn't feel all that different from when we used to sit on the hood of our cars in the parking lot after a high school football game and shoot the breeze with our friends. I had been anxious about leaving the house to brave the task of grocery shopping, but after seeing my friend's face, I felt so much better. I don't think I realized how much I missed her until I got to see her. It was definitely the spiritual pick-me-up that I needed to keep going in today's uncharted waters. And I'm sure Chris could hear the excitement in my voice when I came home and blurted out, guess who I saw? when all I expected to see that day were a bunch of masked strangers. We have seen him, the disciples exclaim on the second Sunday of Easter. We have seen the Lord, they blurt out to Thomas, when he comes back to the house where they are staying. We have seen the Lord was the very first witness to the resurrection when Mary Magdalene ran from the empty tomb on Easter morning to share the good news with the other disciples. When she sees the Lord, Mary, Mary exclaims, Rabbi, and then her next instinct must have been to hug him because we read that Jesus says, do not hold on to me for I have not yet ascended to my father. And then when he appears to the disciples, we read that their reaction is to rejoice when they saw the Lord. Can you imagine what that looked like? You know, he must have also refrained, asked them to refrain from hugging him as well, but we don't know. But I bet they were hugging one another, high-fiving, all but swinging from the rafters when all of a sudden he appeared right in front of them. They were locked away in the house, unnerved, afraid, grieving, and just imagine the joy the relief, the spiritual resurrection they must have felt when the very one they were mourning, their master, their Lord, appeared in their midst. How they longed to see his face. How they longed, like Mary, to hear them, hear him call their names. And then all of a sudden, behind locked doors, there he was in the flesh. Rejoice, I'm sure they did, when they saw him with their own eyes, that what Mary told them was true, that what the Lord himself had promised them had come to pass despite all odds. But Thomas wasn't there. Thomas was out. Maybe it was his turn to go out and get the groceries. Maybe he was the only one willing to risk life and limb to venture out in a hostile environment to get supplies or information to bring back to the others. Or maybe he was just sick of cowering in fear. We don't know. All we know is for whatever reason, Thomas wasn't there. And when he hears them blurt out to him, we have seen the Lord, his reaction is pause. Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, he says, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, I will not believe. Oh, Thomas, how your reputation has been etched in history for the statement 
unless I see, I will not believe. We call him Doubting Thomas. We wag our finger at his lack of faith. But what did he want? He wanted only exactly what everybody else got, to see the Lord. Mary saw him. The other disciples saw him. Now he wanted to see him. He wanted no more proof than what the others had received. And what about the other ten there locked away in the house with him? Did they doubt any less than he? They who wouldn't even leave the house after hearing the testimony of Mary that Jesus lived? Were they rejoicing over Peter's account of the empty tomb? Or did they too need to see him with their own eyes? And just imagine how much more Thomas's heart longed to see and touch his Savior after hearing that his dear sister and brothers already got to see him. These days, I think it is easy for us to imagine that longing. I think right now we can relate to the yearning that he must have felt to see the one he loved and missed so much. There are so many loved ones we want to see, to hold on to, to hear call our names without the use of a cell phone. My prayers are particularly with those who are separated from their loved ones at the time of illness, and those who are not able to sit by the bedside of family or friends facing the end of life. We know firsthand that longing, that spiritual yearning, to be reunited again with those from whom we are now separated by distance, or by, by self-isolation, or even by death. We too, just like Thomas, are waiting for the time we can see them with our own eyes and reach out with our own hands. For Thomas, the waiting must have been torture, especially having to grapple with the fact that he wasn't there. But unlike us, for Thomas, his waiting only lasted a week. For we read that a week later, when they were all together, Jesus came and stood among them and again said to them, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out to your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And upon seeing this, Jesus exclaimed, My Lord and my God. Now this reaction is extraordinary. Thomas's exclamation here is one of the most clear and profound statements in, in Je of faith in Jesus uttered by anyone in any of the Gospels. When Mary sees him outside the tomb, she calls him teacher. Others call him master, Lord, even Messiah. But here on Thomas's lips, we hear the fullest expression of worship in Jesus, not only as the Son of God, but as God himself. And notice the difference here between the reaction of the others and of Thomas. The Gospel tells us that their response is rejoicing, but his is praise. Theirs is joy, but his is worship. Both are obviously appropriate responses upon seeing the risen Lord, but while rejoicing is about expressing one's own feelings, worship is about expression of praise to God. So what about us? What's our reaction when we see and experience Christ in our midst? Do we stop simply at joy? Or do we go on to worship? When we feel him near us, when we see the evidence that he is alive and at work all around us, when we hear miracle stories, do we recognize our Lord? Do we rejoice in his presence? Do we let it overflow into a life of praise? In this time where worship together is no longer something that happens in a church sanctuary, it has to be something that happens in our homes and in our words and in our actions. Everything that we do and say can be living worship of the living Lord who is in and among us. But first we have to see him, to recognize that he is indeed in our midst. 
when Thomas wants to see the Lord, what Jesus shows him are his wounds. Thomas says, I want to see. And Jesus shows him not only his face, but his scarred hands, his feet, and his side. These are what Thomas wants to see and to touch. These are the proof of the presence of the risen Lord. In these days of waiting and wishing, we may find ourselves yearning to see the Lord, to see some sign of proof that he has not left us orphaned, some sign that he is present as he promised in these times when we need to see him the most. But do we ask, we need to ask ourselves, what do we want to see? Do we just want to see his smiling face? Or are we willing also to see his wounds? If we as disciples of the crucified and risen Lord want to see Jesus, he will show us his presence, presence and with us it he will show us his wounds. That is Jesus' presence. Not only his countenance, his embrace, but also his scarred hands and feet. We worship a suffering Christ. So it is precisely in suffering that we will see the Lord, where the hands are worn and weary from caring for the ill, we will see the Lord. Where feet are aching from laboring to provide for the hungry, there we will see the Lord. Where hearts are breaking over loss and grief, there we will see the Lord. The presence of the resurrected Jesus is there in the compassion for the sick and suffering, in the empathy for the poor and needy, in the tears shed with the afraid and the grieving. There in the bound and broken bodies of his children are the hearts, hands, and feet of Jesus. Although history has labeled him the doubter, our call is to be like Thomas, not to be satisfied until we too have seen the Lord present in our midst, until we overflow with the worship and praise of his presence, and not to stop looking until we see the wounds of Christ, because it is in, in the suffering, through the tears, in the waiting, and the yearning, and the grieving, that the body of Christ is present in us, and in all who respond in love. Jesus' presence may not be apparent to us at first. We may have to wait. But perhaps the waiting will make us more ready to worship, make our tongues more willing to praise him, make us realize that Jesus is not just a beatific face in a painted portrait, but that it is his scars that make the proof of his life real, and if we're honest, so much more like our own. Amen.
church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places by praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Open the doors we close, O God, when we fear those who worship you in different ways. Guide us to unity and harmony so that we may come to respect and cherish our commonalities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the hearts we close, O God, to the cries of those in pain. We pray for the isolated through illness, addiction, suffering, incarceration, and all in need. Especially today, we lift up Sally, Irma, Grace, Rhonda, Bill, Aloha, Doug, Marie, Pamela, Miranda, Stephen, Gwen, Phil, and Jean as well as all those we lift before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the ways of love, O God, in the pursuit of peace throughout the world, and bless the efforts of relief workers, healthcare professionals, first responders, and caregivers, especially those whose work puts them at heightened risk for illness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the way to eternal life, O God, as we remember those who have died in faith. Free us from the fear of death, that we embrace the peace that you have promised. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we humbly thank you for your goodness to us and all that you have made. We praise you for your creative and redeeming word, for keeping us in your care, and for the blessing of this community. Above all, we bless you for your immeasurable love in redeeming the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for his life, death, and glorious resurrection, that in him we might all have the hope of glory. As we go forth in faith, give us an ever-present awareness of your mercies, that with thankful hearts we praise you not only with our lips, but in our very lives, giving ourselves to your service and living in holy, holiness and justice all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all worship and praise, now and forever. Amen.
announcements for you today, only that Monday is our regularly scheduled council meeting, so they will be connecting over the internet for a digital meeting, and we will have some notes to share, I'm sure, after that about what activities will resume when as we wait out um, this time of quarantine. So um, please stay posted if you're not connected via the e-news, just um, give us a call and we are checking the messages in the um, church office. So please call, leave a message if you have any concerns or if you're not getting the notes that are being sent out weekly on Friday afternoons. And then finally, again, if you would, just show a number of fingers as you leave to indicate how many people are in your vehicle so that our usher can get an accurate record of attendance today. Now receive this blessing. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.
good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. <laughs> Be still, my soul. 